Welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page, guys. We're happy to have you here. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave us comments, do all the stuff. What are you waiting for? Let's go. I got a drug addiction to feed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast. I'm Dax Holt. That is Adam Glenn. We are enjoying our summers. Well, at least I am. I don't know why I'm speaking for you. How are you? I'm good. I'm enjoying my summer. It's uh, it's definitely slowed down in the New York City with the – things start to calm down now. The writer's strike is going on, so the late-night mm-hmm. shows aren't filming. Um, the other shows that kind of take summer hiatuses, a lot of the talk shows take summer hiatuses, so they're not filming – so things have definitely calmed down. Um, I don't know if there's any big premieres coming to town. So it, it's kind of going to be a, a very slow summer until this writer's strike starts. To... It, it's a weird time of the year, isn't it? I remember it I remember always like when I was doing like the daily news cycle, you know, uh, this was this would be when you'd start getting all the like beach vacation photos. So that would kind of save it. But for the news cycle, like not much going on, really. Yeah, it's um, especially for me, you know, my source of income is getting content and from celebrities getting photos, videos, mostly mm-hmm. videos, sound bites. Unfortunately, it starts to, it, it starts to dry up a little bit. But I have to tell you, since like March, like the end of March till like now, it's just like the busiest time of year for me. So I'm kind of like looking forward to a little bit of a break. So what I do, I go down to the Jersey Shore because I can't afford the Hamptons. <laughs> and I, I'm actually I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm starting to have problems affording the Jersey Shore. Everything's gone up in price. But the Hamptons, I don't know, Dax. You always tell me like I want to go to the Hamptons. I'm like, once you go there, you'll just they price it so high, so you don't go. Yeah. No, I no, I want to go just to experience to see what it's like. Um, but I want it to be an all expense paid trip there. <laughs> yeah. You and me both, buddy. <laughs> you and me both. It's I just uh, need I need like a sugar daddy to just pay for my bills so I can go hang out in the Hamptons. Some people there's a lot of sugar daddies out there. And it's weird though. Like I, I don't know. The first you know, I've been to the Hamptons uh, quite a few times. You know, I think the expectations are high. You're gonna run into these celebrities everywhere, but it's not necessarily celebrities. There are celebrities there. But I don't see those people out. It's more just like different Long Island, New York City people that just kind of want to flaunt a little bit. And it's well, just... yeah, because if if you're a celebrity going there on vacation, you just want to hang out in your pool in your backyard. Like you go to the Hamptons to hang out in your big mansion. You're you're not going to just eat out in the town, right? I guess so. I mean, if you're Howard Stern, for example. I'm sure Howard Stern has to have a private chef. So for him, he's like, why would I go out to dinner when I have a private chef going to make incredible food, use like good products? I can invite my friends over. I have a place that has tons of land. I'm right on the beach. Why would you leave? So yeah. I, again, I think they – do they go to restaurants? Sure. I'm sure they go to restaurants at times. But also the best thing about the Hamptons is that you don't have to leave your house. Exactly. Exactly. You go exactly. there. Like well, in New York City, you have to leave your place. In the Hamptons, you're at a place where you don't have to leave. So 100%. that's the summer in the Hamptons. Well, today I want to do I want to do an episode. So to let you guys in on an Adam and I's world, all week we're texting, we're calling each other, we're like, you know, we're basically like lovers over long distance lovers just constantly bombarding each other with texts and phone calls. Um, <laughs> but it all is celebrity driven. And, uh, you know, we'll send each other random facts throughout the week. Like, Hey, did you see this? Or, Hey, did you see that? Or, you know, I think because it's a slower news time, you know, we start getting into like the random, the most random crap we start sending each other. So, um, I want to bring up some of the things from our text chain just from this week alone um, and, and kind of let people in on what we talk about in our uh, in our messages. But um, let me get to a review real fast, an iTunes review. Read that out loud so we can dive into our text chain from this week. All right. This one comes from 
Wait, Dex, Kate. do we get into a review? Do we do a review or we're going to go right Yeah, I'm into doing it? the review right now. This okay, is a review. Okay. The iTunes review is right here. This is from Keely from New Jersey. It says, love the podcast. I was listening to an episode the other day and started laughing out loud at the gym. People were looking at me like I was nuts. Thanks for making my workouts more enjoyable. Keely from New Jersey. <laughs> That's nice. I, I've done that on other people's podcasts, like sit there and I'll listen to them and then just start laughing out loud and realize that I look like the psycho. So... I'm glad that other people are doing that listening to our podcast. No, Keely from New Jersey. Thank you from uh, thank you from Dex and I. Thank you for being a listener. Do you want to do one more? Or do you want to get into what what you were talking about regarding me and you? Me and uh, let's let's jump change. in. Let's jump in. Um, okay. uh, I, I want to get into when you texted me earlier this week about the walk of fame and how you know, like a lot of people, obviously, I think we've mentioned it on the podcast before how how people don't realize that the walk of fame you can buy to be on the walk of fame. Like that happens all the time with different big movie companies. They're doing promotion for their movie. So they end up getting the star for their big, you know, whoever is starring in their movie, they'll get a star and that way it's promotion for the movie. But what I thought was interesting, I thought it was $20,000. Don't you remember? We've, I, in my mind, it's always been, you want to get a star on the walk of fame It's going to cost you $20,000. That's not the case. Um, it's actually 75,000 bucks to, to get the star on the walk of fame. And the other thing that um, I learned this week was that anyone can be nominated. You can nominate anyone. You just go to the walk of fame.com and you can nominate any person on the planet. And then they have like a voting once a year in June. Did you know any of that? Like, I, I, I did not know that, and I would I would love for you guys to nominate us. That would be really cool. <laughs> um, but the thing is, we wouldn't be able to pay for the star. We're like, hey, thanks for the nomination, but we can't afford it at this point right now. Um, but you know what, Dax? Before we even get into more of the Hollywood Walk of Fame, hmm. if someone has never been to Hollywood, would you recommend them say, hey, you need to go to the Hollywood Walk of Fame? <sighs> It's pretty dirty. I, I think I think people will be let down. So they fly, like you have this vision of what the Walk of Fame looks like. You have a vision of what Hollywood looks like. And I think the biggest feedback I get from friends and family that are from out of town, that they go there or from out of the country and they think Hollywood's beautiful and glamorous. And then you get there and you're like, this shit is nasty. Yeah. <laughs> you it's know, a like scary you, area. Yeah, it's a scary area. You get to Hollywood Highlands. And I just don't like, you know, you've got all these people that are dressed up like characters or the, the people that are, you know, that charge you five bucks to take a picture with them because they're dressed like Marilyn Monroe or, or Elvis or whatever. And then you get close and you're like, oh, this these outfits don't look like they've been washed in 14 years. And I don't know. It's just it's gross and grimy. I think that you need to see it like you need to physically there, see the stars on the ground, go to the Grauman Theater where you can see the handprints. But like, I don't know, an hour or two, I wouldn't plan your whole day going to walk up and down the street. No, I remember the first time I stumbled upon and I was like kind of I say stumbled because I was leaving a bar and I was like, oh, my God, I'm on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And then I started looking at the names I didn't recognize anybody. I, you know, you think you're going to see people you know right away. There's 20 over. There's more than 2,700 stars on the Walk of Fame. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people, I mean, that you don't know. I would say majority of the people you don't know. Well, because a lot of those people are directors or writers or people that are behind the camera. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to have a recognizable name to be successful in the industry. And so that's why you don't recognize half of them. And then again, this has been going on for so long that maybe you just weren't alive when that person was at the top of their game. Sure. Uh, no. You know, with that, with that $75,000 fee, you probably wonder, where mm -hmm. does that money go to? It pays for the installation of the star it also says they pay for the maintenance of the star but if, if anybody knows you've walked by if you've walked on the hollywood walk of fame recently there's very very minimal maintenance it's I, not i don't think i told you i actually saw a star taking pictures at their star did i ever say about this no 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 david hasselhoff no way really yes Yes. So my drive to and from TMZ back in the day, um, 
uh, we had an office right in like Hollywood area. It was across from Hyde in this like shopping center. We we're on the top floor. So my drive was off the 101 all the way down either Hollywood or Sunset every day. And it was the most entertaining ride to and from because it was early in the morning. You'd see all these people like stumbling out of clubs, walking, you know, trying to get home, like holding their high heels, like those people. And then on the way back, you would you would just see a lot of random characters out at, at these times when I was traveling. But I remember coming home one day. I drove up and I was driving down um, Hollywood Boulevard and I look over and yeah, it was David Hasselhoff. And I don't know why he was there. I don't know if it was like there was a there was like a camera there with him, like a big camera, like a TV show kind of camera. And it was him by his star and they were like posing. And then the next day I saw the pap photos come through and I was like, oh, my God, I was there. I literally saw David Hasselhoff next to his star doing some something i don't know what it was what he was doing uh but yeah, i mean it's david freaking hassle off so was he with a lot of people or is he no just kind no, of no. It was like what do you think he was just riding by or it was just him and like one camera guy and i mean there's probably like another person off to the side that i didn't see it was kind of quick that i drove by um but i know it was super chill and his star is somewhat near the epicenter area um but still like not in the prime location like they put the biggest stars on the planet in the prime location which i bet when david got his star he was prime david hasloff you know biggest dude on the planet you know what's so, you know what's so crazy with being a celebrity is how much money it costs to be a celebrity so it's an investment. For example, the Hollywood, this just the star alone, that's seventy five thousand dollars. Then you have to pay for, you know, the, and now this is small, the small money. You got to pay for your makeup, your your beauty, mm-hmm. your style. Then you have to pay for your publicist and your manager. There's a lot of money coming out, so you have to make so much money to be a celebrity from the travel and everything that goes with it. It's it's not cheap. Yeah, no, it's not. And remember. Who was it that said like the hardest thing in Hollywood is to be poor, poor and famous? Yeah, it was uh, Kid Rock said it. Kid, Kid Rock Kid said Rock. about Pam Anderson. That's right. Rumors that's right. Pam Anderson. Yeah. So. Oh, it's... so I'm looking. Yeah, it was, and TMZ fully did a story. I forgot back in the day of David Hasselhoff at his star. He went to let's see the only thing. Yeah, he. Oh, he. So he, here's what it was. He went to a burger place and while he was at the burger place, then went out and took photos with um, fans at his star. I love it. That's, That's cool. So David Hasselhoff, he's a pretty nice guy, right? Yeah, because his star is like right outside of the hotel. What was it? The, the Roosevelt. So he went into the Roosevelt to eat, came out, took pictures by his star. That's kind of dope, dude. I don't know. I That's like cool. that. That's cool. Anyway. A nice. Uh, That's one day. I mean, it would be kind of cool to have a walk, but there's. There's other things that'd be cooler to do with seventy five thousand dollars as well. Plus, Agreed. you have to do a two hundred and fifty dollar application fee that has to be done once every two oh, years. Oh, see, so right there apply. alone, I'm out. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Forget the seventy five thousand dollars. I'm out on the two fifty <laughs> application fee. <laughs> yeah, that would be uh, that would be. Bad. Oh, speaking of which, and then, and, then, and then you're in front of like a panel of people. I don't know who these people are, but they, you know, they get two to three hundred different nominees a year, and then it's like this panel that gets together in June decides the 30 people they're going to be selected for the year. And then you have two years as the celebrity, because you have to show up to your unveiling and unless of course it's, you know, after you're dead, but um, you have to show up. That's part of the rec- the requirements to getting a star on the walk of fame. That's why all the big stars are actually show up to this thing. Cause you have to be there. Yeah, that's so, uh... Oh, I get well. What else did we talk about on our on our channel? Um, what else were we talking about? There, were, you I, texted we me about. Oh, movies. you 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 texted me the movie stuff. Yeah, you yeah. texted me about like the biggest blockbusters of all time and how much money they were making, and then we and then we started going back about the biggest box office busts of all time, and we started guessing which movies were the biggest box office busts, and we didn't get a single one right because I actually went and looked it up. Which one did you think had lost a bunch of money? What was it like um, Mulan or the Jungle I, Cruise? But that's not that's not even in the top 10. No, the, actually, the movies I thought were it weren't even in the top 10. I thought it was going to be like 
I actually thought it would be a a, a rock movie when I mean Dwayne mm-hmm. Johnson rock. I thought it was gonna be. I just didn't think his movies did well. So so I ended up going and pulling up the biggest box office bus of all time. And I was actually kind of surprised. So Tomorrowland, do you remember Tomorrowland, the, the George Clooney yeah. movie? It was like, I think, a Disney movie. So mm-hmm. that one ended up losing like $185 million in the box office. Like, I think they had it budgeted for 180 and then it only made a, basically 180 So that means they ended up losing out worldwide uh, almost $200 million based on all the other expenses, marketing, and all of this, they they ended up just, it was a huge fail. And I'm surprised being a Disney movie and George Clooney that it failed so hard. Yeah. I mean, but you wonder if it was just the movie alone was not good. And after they made, they, they, the movie cost so much money to make, you know, their CGI mm-hmm. and, and stuff. There's, it's, there was a lot of uh, technical work into making this movie. But you wonder so, when you're making a movie like this, as you're making like, yeah, this movie's not going to do well. Because I actually talked to Mark Paul Gossler one time. I talked to Mark mm-hmm. Paul Gossler and um, another actress. And I asked him, I said, have you guys ever been involved with a project where midway through the project, you knew, oh, this this is not going to be good. It's not going to work. They say, yeah, well, they, yeah. They know. They, they, I didn't know which – they didn't tell me which exact projects, but they said, yeah. They said, like, I've been in the middle of it. Like, yeah, this is not going to be a fun one. This is not going to – go over well yeah and then what do you do it's like you can't do anything and if you're a big star and you're involved in this huge movie and then halfway through you're going oh this is not going to end well there's nothing you can do about it you're like this is going to make me look bad and people aren't going to want to hire me because i was in a big box office bust but there's nothing you can do about it there's also a surprising movie on this list that i thought when so we kind of looked at this list uh, the movie Sinbad, Legend of the Seven Seas. It was an animated movie with Brad Pitt. So, Bra- yeah. but Brad Pitt wasn't in the movie. Obviously, it's an animated movie. He was just doing the mm-hmm. voice. So, great payday for Brad Pitt, but didn't do so well for. It didn't get good ratings. You know what's interesting? He's voiced over quite a few characters where the movie didn't do well, which is weird. Like he was in the Sinbad one, Mastermind. Mastermind was a f- freaking fabulous movie i don't know why that didn't get more attention my kids used to love watching it was will ferrell and him and if you've never watched mastermind you should totally watch it's hilarious and then he was also in wasn't he in the what was the llama one with david uh david spade uh the prince gets a new groove or something like yeah, that yeah yeah wasn't wasn't brad pitt the voice of like the big strong guy in that one too I'd have to look. You watch more Disney films than I do. Um, so And I don't, I don't feel like that one did particularly well. Also, good movie. Um, but it just didn't turn into one of those huge Disney hits. And it's maybe Brad Pitt needs to stick away from uh, doing voiceovers. It's not ending well. I don't think, yeah, I don't think people tune into a Brad Pitt movie to hear just his voice. They want to see him. I don't know. You know what's funny? And I, I'm looking over this list of just these these movies. Yeah, so go over the top list. Ten. That's on the list. All right, so the top 10, uh, starting from number 10, heading to one. And maybe I, I may be at 11 here. But Tomorrowland, Pan, Mars Needs Moms, Battleship, Strange World, Sinbad, The Legend of the Seven Seas, Cutthroat, Mortal Engines, The 13th Warrior, Lone Ranger, with you know Johnny Depp, and then the number one is John Carter. John Carter, I guess it was a the budget was two hundred and sixty three million, and they only grossed two hundred and eighty four million. Which you go, oh yeah, they they made twenty million on it, but that's that's not how it works in the, min, in the movie industry. You have to actually make money on it. <laughs> you know, you need to bring in a hundred million over. So. Uh, apparently that movie lost between 143 and 255 million dollars based on those numbers um but i'm looking through that list i hadn't seen a single one of those movies and those were pretty big name movies like that they were promoting that people knew about and i didn't see a single one of them did you see any of those i did not i might have i probably saw a few minutes of lone ranger and battleship but mm-hmm. the other movies i did not I would say that a lot of these movies were movies where, again, as soon as the movie was done, 
and the executive producers and everyone gets to finally see the final copy, I have to imagine they weren't happy with the result. No. Battleship, and they promoted the crap out of Battleship because I remember because that was when Rihanna, you know, she was in that movie and they were touting her like, you know, this is kind of like a big acting performance by her. And then the movie just tanked big time. Yeah, it was. uh, That was a mess. That was not good. I mean, there was so much hype around Battleship because of Rihanna. I thought that was supposed to be a big thing, but that was... Yeah. You know, can I tell you one thing though? Over the last couple of months, you remember how Margot Robbie was in like a bunch of movies that failed recently? Yes. So I was thinking about this because I didn't think it was fair. There was a bunch of news outlets out there kind of like making it seem like every movie that Margot Robbie is in fails when that's obviously not the case. But I just thought to focus on that and highlight the fact that she was in all these like crap you know movies that didn't do well i'm like you're really kind of messing with her her career by turning that into a story like there is potential that the production company didn't promote it right there's there's a chance that you know it just it didn't resonate with people but i feel like blame almost like putting the spotlight on well she is the the connection between these movies failing like don't you think that's kind of really effing with her and her job that she makes money doing. Yeah. I mean, it it definitely puts a, puts a a check mark and puts a, it just puts a a bad thought in people's heads. So, and it's show business and it just doesn't work out well. And Margot Robbie is an unbelievable actress. She's great. I I felt, I guess I just felt bad when I read these stories and I'm like, that's not her fault. Like she probably did perfect in these movies. And if they're not, promoted properly or they don't catch the attention of the audience or whatever but like to almost sculpt the narrative around margot robbie is the connection between all these crappy movies i was just like oh that that's that's a gnarly um a gnarly thing to do to someone it's still sad to see what's going on in the movie industry now because it's just not the same as it was i'd say 15 years ago streaming has definitely taken over People don't go to theaters except to see big mm-hmm. sort of events like a Marvel movie or some sort of uh, action-packed movie, it, comedy movies. So I talked to a big comedic actor recently, yeah, and they said to me that they're rooting for um, Burke Kreischer and Sebastian Maniscalco because they recently came out with movies. Actually, both of them came out with movies in the last six weeks or month, um, and they're rooting for the movies to do well because if their movies did well – that would kind of give more heat to comedy movies to being made. The problem yeah. is people don't go to movie theaters to see comedy films. They don't. People won't spend the money to go see a movie in a regular theater. They'll people go pay to doing... go see it in an IMAX, but that's the problem with comedy films. They're just not making money anymore. There's a reason why Adam Sandler you, – you're never going to see an Adam Sandler film again in movie theaters. He's oh, He's got a huge Netflix deal. The Netflix deal has actually been very, very well for him and also for mm-hmm. Netflix. He's making a lot of money. He also has a little bit more of uh, creative control. He doesn't have to sell anything because he has his own production company. So he kind of can make his own movies. But part of his deal is he has to make movies for Netflix. But it's been a good partnership. But other comedy movies, they, they're they having issues Dude, it being makes made sense, because though. it doesn't like, make well, they don't do well. It makes sense. Go through it and do something through Netflix. Again, I saw – murder mystery one murder mystery two because it was easy and accessible and people aren't going to movie theaters anymore i had two movie theaters within like five to ten minutes of my house both of them shut down and it's it really shows that people just aren't leaving their homes anymore to go and consume movies like we used to and that that's coming off of probably one of the biggest you know movie generating times ever between like Top Gun Maverick and um, what were the other one? There was um, uh, the Marvel uh, stuff. Uh, Avatar, The Way yeah. of Water. Like we had some really big movies come out where obviously money was fueling back into those theaters and they're still closing. Yeah. It's so, uh, it's just know. it's just sad. I just I miss it. I understand the significance and it's, it's, it's sad that people won't feel that excitement of walking into a movie theater with popcorn, seeing those cardboard signs, seeing what movies are coming out. 
uh, trailers. I, I mean, that was part of the movie experience that I miss. But again, it's um, technology. The industry is always changing. What else did we talk about? By the way, on, on that note, are you curious at all of like the top grossing movies of all time? Yes, I would. I would love to know. Um, can you, I guess number one? Yeah, can you? And I'm not yeah. looking at the list because I, I, you know, and I go just because it was in my head. I'm gonna have to say it was Avatar. Yeah, but but one or two. I'm gonna go with one because at yes. the time people don't. <laughs> number one, yeah, uh, Avatar one is still leading at the top. It's it's grossed in 2.9 billion dollars since 2009. But uh, the way of water, Wasn't that the good second of a movie. One, I thought it was it was like groundbreaking for the time. I think so. I loved Avatar. I like I liked Avatar too. It was just three hours too long. Like even my kids could not sit anymore in that movie. They were like, "Okay, Daddy, like this, we need to be done here. This this movie is lasting so freaking long. They could have cut an hour out of that movie and still got the same point across." Yeah, and it probably could have been out three years earlier. But um, the way what of water is that, list, by the way. And it's number three on the list, so it's it's at two point three billion. Uh, Endgame, Avengers Endgame, is actually number two. Titanic is number four, which is pretty amazing to think that James Cameron has three of the top four movie, uh, the highest grossing movies of all time. Think about that; like that's unbelievable. Titanic and Avatar is pretty crazy. I, it's the so guy hard to direct so a movie, money. and he just he's got to be worth so much money. But it's so hard to direct a movie, and he just did like excellent jobs with those movies like when you think about you know for me my favorite movies all time you know from like george lucas to steven spielberg i mean these guys did a very very hard job and did consecutive like consistently and Mm -hmm. consecutively fucking great movies i mean it's just it's unreal unreal um all right what do we what else did we talk about and then we talked about what else did we talk about can you open your phone and look we did Uh, the oh the Hollywood sign. We are so random, dude. The freaking Hollywood sign. Because I was. Well, we I only was driving... we spoke about that because we took. We were at the Hollywood sign. We yep. went to it. We we didn't go to the actual sign because you can't. You can't, you can't go get to it. You'll get arrested sign. if you go to touch the sign. You'll get arrested. Isn't it's it like crazy that you can't go and touch the sign, but I get it too. So what you can do if you guys ever come to Hollywood and you you want to like get a good view of the Hollywood sign. Um, or you watch like our YouTube page and like the intro, you can see we're in this like park and then the Hollywood signs right behind you. That's probably the best place to get photos. It's called this, uh, Lake Hollywood park. And so you'll Google Lake Hollywood. You have to go up all these winding streets up in the Hollywood Hills, but a lot of tourists don't know about this park. And so write that down Lake Hollywood park. And, um, and then uh, you you Google map up there and it's like right below it. It's the best photos. And then if you want to do a hike, you can do a hike that goes up behind the sign. It's just it's not going to be the view you want. You're going to get kind of like the back side of the sign. And then obviously you get a good view of L.A. and Hollywood. It's just the photos aren't going to be as good as the Lake Hollywood area. Um, anyway. Uh, so we could start talking about that and just like the whole evolution. Like I didn't realize that the Hollywood sign was put up there by a real estate agent. Like I knew that it used to say Hollywood land. I didn't know why I never looked into it. I looked into it this week and it was put up in like 1923 by this real estate agent who was just trying to do like some, he was trying to advertise a bunch of properties. So he put up the Hollywood land and it, I, I think back then it cost him $21,000 to put up the whole thing, which it's a huge ass sign. <laughs> it's really, really big. Um, and it was only supposed to be up there for like 18 months. And then they ended up shortening it, obviously took off the land. And so it says Hollywood. And then it just became a staple. And that's when it really became Hollywood itself. And people started branding it. And that's when, you know, Johnny Carson started saying live from Hollywood, even though he wasn't even in Hollywood, he was in Burbank. But like, it became this cool trust spot um and and glamorous and exciting and i I just i don't know i like hearing the stories of behind like why things are the way they are and how you know if they would have pulled down that sign after the 18 months and just said okay that's it 
Like we wouldn't, that sign would have been gone. No one would have ever thought about it. So I wonder how many things are out there that got pulled down that could have been an iconic spot or, you know, a landmark. Yeah. I, I don't know the exact details in Dax. Maybe, you know, that Hugh Hefner, the, the former mm-hmm. owner, he's deceased now, but the former owner of Playboy actually saved the Hollywood sign. I guess there was some, they, it needed money and he would actually like help raise money and donated mm. the money he raised to help saving the Hollywood sign. But That's it's interesting. just, yeah, I know that they, I know that they like, they have some kind of trust or whatever to, cause you have to repaint that thing every few years. You know, it's not like it's, it is like sheet metal on a, a frame essentially up there. And every once in a while, like one of the big sheets will fly off and they'll go and reattach it, but they have to paint it. There's been a lot of graffiti on it over the years. They got to do that. There's been weird people that will, you know, climb up it and make a bunch of news attention. I remember there was, um, there was a Hollywood actress who actually took her life. She jumped off the H um, peg something or other back in the day. Um, but, you know, it obviously gets a lot of attention if people try to get up near it. Uh, but, yeah, it costs money to keep that. You know what? I Here's one thing that I could have sworn. I thought it was lit up. That thing is not lit up. It is not highlighted at night. Did you know that? I did not know. And actually, it's funny. Like, I never really think about it when I'm near there or even going mm-hmm. by there. But you would think there would be some lights on the Hollywood No sign. lights on it. But I also understand that because it just sort of like light pollution and it's not necessary. The only time I think I've seen it lit up was for like a New Year's Eve. You know how they'll do the like, um, I don't know if it's the Seacrest one or whatever, but they'll have the New York feed and then the L.A. feed and they go and they'll show you're in Hollywood. That's the only time I've actually seen lights on it and they had like lasers and lit it all up at night. But yeah, on a normal basis, it you Three years ago, you could have asked me, is the Hollywood sign lit up at night? I would have bet you $100 it was. It is not. Another thing we spoke about this week is names. And we, oh. me and you actually said to each other, like, maybe we have to change our name to really become successful in this industry. <laughs> because it's just maybe Adam Glenn is just not like – it doesn't stand out enough. It's not mm-hmm. a strong enough name. And I knew a guy, one of – a celebrity who – a celebrity from my hometown – his name, his real name, was Jeff Lipschitz. Jeff that was his Lipschitz? Name. That's Jeff, his name? His name was, his real name is Jeff Lipschitz. Do you know <laughs> what his name is now? No. Do you, so if I said to you, just Jeff Lipschitz, who would you think this? His name now, he knows he's now a celebrity. He's now a comedian. Oh, okay. Is he is an actor or a singer? I'd say more of an actor. He's a comedian. Um, so his okay. original name is Jeff Lipschitz. Now he goes by the name of Jeff Ross, the Roastmaster. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So his, his name was Jeff Lipschitz. Well, I can understand why he changed it. So it was Jeff Lipschitz. Then he changed it to Jeff Lipschultz. Then now he goes by the name of Jeff Ross. That's his stage name. And I, I only got to imagine, like, how much – if I changed my name and gave myself a Hollywood stage name, how many people, how many of my friends would just make fun of me for changing my name? Like, oh, who do you think you are? What are you doing? No. So when once we started talking about this, I got – I pulled up a list – I'm going to have you do a little guessing game. And and I, I think the audience can play along because these it's a, it, this could be a fun game to see. And maybe people can like write in and tell us how many they actually got right out of this whole thing. Cause these are hard, but I've got it. I pulled a list of a bunch of celebrity birth names versus how we know them. And I don't think you're going to get a lot of these, right? Let's like, try it. Just, I'm actually just, down just, to try this. One. And these are these are huge, like massive, massive celebrities, and you wouldn't know them if you called them by their birth name. All right, here, here's your yeah. first one, Adam, and for audience as well. Ella Marie Lonnie Yelch O'Connor. Ella, say that name again. Ella Marie Lonnie Yel Yelich O'Connor. I'm going to go with just because of the last name, Sinead O'Connor. No. <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, that good guess. I like that at least there was deductive reasoning there. It's actually Lord. Lord? The singer. Wait. All right. Say that Lord's real name is what? Ella Marie Lonnie Ye- Yelich O'Connor. I would change my name to Lord. I understand that. 
<laughs> you know, like Lord sounds a lot better. And actually, yeah, give her yeah. credit because that's a cool name to go. She's a young person. Like, you know what? I don't like my name. I'm gonna go by Lord. Lord, exactly. That's, that's actually a cool nickname. But it's funny. Do you at that you become such a star? Do you when people call you Ella? Do you respond? Or when they call you Lord? Do you respond? Like it's hard to. I think I think these both. celebrities once they have their stage name, like they go by either, but. I doubt many people are calling her Ella. I bet it's her parents, her family, you know, people in her life. But I think if anyone calls her Ella, she's like, no, no, no. That's that's not a name you use for me. I make okay, sense. here's another one. Yeah. Uh, Stevland Hardaway Judkins. Say his name again. Stevland Hardaway Judkins. Stella. Hardaway. Stevland, Stevland. Hardaway Judkins. Stevland. Steve Harvey. I don't know, but a, a good guess. Stevie Wonder. Wow. I was. Cl- I mean, that's not close, but it's close. Yeah. Uh, Stevie Wonder. Man. That's right? Good, I mean, Stevie uh, Wonder's like, a good again, name. So, so what's interesting I is... I actually thought Stevie Wonder was his original name. I did not know that. I, a lot of these that I'm going through, I didn't realize it wasn't their their birth name. I, I thought they, I thought their name that we know them by was their birth name, like Emily Jean Stone. Any clue? Emily Emma Stone. Yeah, Emma Stone. Um, let's see. How about Onika Tanya Mirage? Nicki Minaj. Damn you! How do you know that one? <laughs> yeah, because he said Minaj. I would say I said, I said Mirage. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's a sound. It's sound. But okay. Well, well, you're doing good. Good job. Yeah. Uh, Alicia Moore. Come on, you should probably know this one. This one's sure. pretty well. Known. Well, it could be Mandy Moore. It could be Alicia Keys. Can't think. Da, na, 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 Alicia, na, na. it's Alicia Keys or Mandy Moore. It's pink. Oh, I, there's no chance. There's, no, there's no chance <laughs> Oh, here's a good one. This one, this one's dope. Peter Jean Bayot Hernandez. Bruno Mars. Fuck you. How did you know that? Because I just remember, what was the last name again? Martinez? Hernandez. Hernandez. I just remember that Bruno Mars. I, I, dude, that was unreal. I was, I, I didn't think about that. <laughs> Because I remember Bruno Mars having like a Martinez or Hernandez. So that was just a. I just went with Bruno Mars. All right. Well, good guess. I'll tell you what, these guys pick really good names, but it's like whatever name you choose, you got to stick with it. Like Pete Diddy screwed it up. Pete Diddy, are you Puff Daddy? Are you Diddy? Are you Pete Diddy? No, you can't keep changing your name. Yeah. It's like stick to a name. But whoever picked their names, they pick great names. I mean, they got to. I don't know. Everyone's got great names. I got to give them a lot of credit. What okay. else do we talk about on this? No, guy? no, no. I've got, I've got right. like three more. I've got three more. Oh, okay. Let's do it. Audrey like Perry. Audrey Perry. Well, Aubrey, Aubrey uh, is Drake. So Audrey Perry, Tyler Perry. Faith Hill. <laughs> what? I did not expect <laughs> that. <laughs> I did okay, not how about that. how about Cheryl Sarkissian? Cheryl Crow. I know Cher. Dude, I, if you guys are listening and know this stuff, props to you because these this is really good. <laughs> but this is its own game show. Is guessing who these celebrities and celebrity right. birth names. Get I got. Okay, wait, hold on, on, hold on. I okay. Actually, two more. Demetria Jean Gynus. Gynus. Say the name again. Demetria Jean Gynus. I don't know if I'm saying the last name right. Demi Moore. How? D- no, and was that right? Yes. That is good. Because Demetrius, I'm thinking De- Demi, like what name? Demi, 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 Demetrius. It's like a short name for Demi. <sighs> so I, if, if I just shorten the name, I would go by Demi. So that was a throw. That was good. All right. All right. Last one. Tara Lee Patrick. Tara Reed. Nope. Rachel Lee Cook. Nope. 
Any other guesses? Uh, Osama bin Laden. Carmen Electra. What? What's the name again? Tara Lee Patrick. Wow, that's good. I got one for uh, you. Ready? Yep. O- Olivia Cockburn. Um, Olivia Cockburn. Uh, I'm trying to think of Olivia's that I know. Um, I mean, the only she was the girl Olivia... I went to high school with. No, I'm kidding. Olivia. Olivia <laughs> <laughs> no, um, Olivia. Uh, the Cockburn. only Olivia I know is Olivia Wilde. That's the only it's Olivia, Olivia Wilde. Yeah. Oh, so yes, I got one right. So you can imagine uh, why she changed her name. That is not, you know, I didn't make yeah, it up. Yeah, Olivia Cockburn going through, changed her name through to Olivia school. Wilde. So <laughs> what else? Um, we, so we talked a lot about movies well, because we're grab talking. grab my phone. I got I to gotta refresh my brain of what else we talked about. We talked about Arnold Schwarzenegger making all that money in Terminator. That's actually interesting. We could talk about that. Well, you know what's so funny? I almost bought a – when I was in L.A. recently, I – there was a movie poster. It was like seven hundred dollars, so it was a little too expensive. But it was look. It was like, you know, a really cool movie poster a signed by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Seven hundred dollar movie. Yeah. poster. was it autographed? Yeah, it was autographed. Oh, okay. uh, and fr- and also framed, but uh, by Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I should have went to Charles from uh, Autograph City, but I just saw. It. I was like, man, that's a pretty cool thing because it's just an iconic photo of mm-hmm. him signed. But we talked about we were talking about Arnold and Terminator. Oh yeah, so so. I remember this. I remember this fact from when I was younger, and I had to go look it up because I remember it being like really impressive. But if you remember Arnold Schwarzenegger when he was at literally the height of his career, and it was Terminator Two: Judgment Day came out, and everyone kind of found out how he made fifteen million dollars for doing that movie. And then I remember people actually counted the amount of words that were spoken out of his mouth during the movie, which was 700 words. And then they did the the math on it. He ended up making $21,428 per word in the movie. <laughs> Can you imagine? That's insane. It's so crazy. But that movie was a huge success. I looked up the numbers. It made over $500 million in the box office. So obviously it was worth it. But I just remember everyone talking about that it was like the best payday for any celebrity, any actor, because you have 700 words, you have no lines in an entire movie, and you're getting paid $15 million to just like strut around on camera. Like legit, man, legit. That's gotta be so incredible. Like when Arnold just like, you just walk on set, you look good and just, hey, you know, the director cues are just to walk. Uh, yeah. And the movie, I mean, Terminator 2, what, that came out probably, what, 1992? That's my year? Uh, yeah. Somewhere. I should look that up. I'm going to guess 1992 is when uh, Terminator 2 came out. That sounds about right. Uh, let me see if I see it anywhere. I don't see the date. Uh, Googling quickly. 1991. 1991, okay. the movie came out. Nice. But do you remember how big and how crazy that movie coming out was? The way, when that movie came out, the... We talk about people don't go to movies, but like Terminator 2, even if you never saw Terminator 1, you had to go see Terminator 2. From the movie poster to the music, Guns N' Roses made a song for it, and it was just, man, it was crazy. You know what's so funny? I was at a Comic-Con recently, and I saw Eddie mm-hmm. Furlong from Terminator 2 there. Oh, Terminator, yeah. And uh, he's still, like, he looks a little swollen because he's older. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But, like... He's he went a, through a pretty rough time, though. He was he was not doing great for many years. Yeah, but he's still like from that movie, still mm-hmm. a star. Like people still yeah. talk about him because that's really so, all he did, right? I, I was thinking about this the other day with Will Smith and then Alfonso Rubiero and how they start on this you know, Fresh Prince, and they were both on top of the world, but just the trajectory of the two different careers. Like Alfonso is still a celebrity in his own right, hasn't done as much, obviously, as Will Smith, but like how he is tied to the Fresh Prince show for the rest of his life, whereas Will, you don't think Fresh Prince. Like when I say Will Smith, there's probably 50 other titles that come to your head before Fresh Prince, right? Yeah, you're you're right. How do you 
So let's say Dax, you're a manager or a publicist. How do you kind of stir someone's career so they're able to – I guess he, Will had so much work or got so much work from Fresh Prince that you can't even think of one Will Smith project. You think of a few of them, whereas mm-hmm. you know Alfonso – Still, you know, still has a good career. And you know, let's be real; he's done some good guest appearances. I think he's the host of America's Funniest Home Videos. That show's still on. Again, though, so, do you think of America's Funniest Home Videos, or do you think of Fresh Prince when you think of him? Fresh Prince. Yeah, because it was just such a big hit, and I think that that can be a curse for a lot of these celebrities or these actors. Where you, when you think of Robert Pattinson, you think of Twilight. You don't necessarily think of Batman yet, you know? I don't know. I just, you get typecast into these roles and you can't seem to get out of them um, until you're so big that you eclipse that that massive role. Yes, but then you think of people like Jason Alexander who played George Costanza on Seinfeld. And he's just an actor. He made a lot of money. He does well, but he's still just acts. So here's the difference. Um, the Friends cast. When you think of Jennifer Aniston, you, you, yes, you think of Friends, but you don't only think of Friends. You know, whereas some of the other cast members on there, you bring up Matthew Perry's name, you think only Friends. Even though he's done other movies, he's done other projects, just nothing has been as big as Friends has. I don't know. It's just it was a fascinating thought in my mind of how, you know, the the careers of certain people really take off, whereas their castmates aren't as big. I'm not saying they're not successful. They they are. It's just, you kind of get known as that one role. And I mean, it happens with me. It doesn't matter all the things that I've done post TMZ. People still know me as TMZ dude, you know? Yeah. I mean, even same thing, people still think of me as, you know, even everything I've done, people still think me as an idiot. So, um, (laughs) It's pretty, it's very, very similar. I get it. Uh, random fact, actually, bring up random facts yeah. about Friends and Matthew Perry. Did you know Matthew Perry is missing the tip of his finger? Was one of his fingers? No. He got to an accident with his kid. So if you look at his hand, I actually noticed it. Like he's, he, like one of his so fingers. Matthew, Matthew Perry. Yeah, Matthew, Matthew Perry. If you look at, like, I'm sure if you Google it, it comes up. He's missing, to. like, the tip. Oh, of shit. One of his he, like his middle finger. Yeah. I did not know that. When did this happen? Um, friend set. No, he was, I think it's an accident he had when he was a kid. So that is so I, interesting. I had no idea. I never knew he was missing the tip of his middle finger. Yeah. Something. Yeah. I think, uh, when he was filming that movie with Salma Hayek where rich people, you know, and I'm just kidding. No, he, something <laughs> happened when he was younger, but he's missing the tip of his finger. And it's funny. That Some, is a actually actual a lot of, legit random fact. I like that. A lot of celebrities have weird things with their hands or fingers. Because like Denzel Washington, if you notice his hand, I mm-hmm. saw him. He's there's a What's there's that? a. If you look up Denzel Washington's finger, he's got like a finger that's like it looks like Denzel Washington must have been a lineman in the NFL. Like it just sticks. His like pinky like sticks out sideways. It's not like attached oh, yeah, to his yeah. hand. Like it, like it was broken back in the day. Yeah, and it just never got fixed. But like a weird break, like not a pleasant, pretty looking break. Yeah, dude, it is. It is very like cocked to the side. That's funny. Did you know that Harry Styles has four nipples? No, I shut. Now you're joking with me. I'm not. Harry Styles has four nipples. Like legit four nipples. Yeah. Like yeah. the two are. Where are the other two? You got the two regular. So where are the other two? The regular ones where nipples are, and then he's got two more further down on like kind of his rib cage area. But are they I nipples or are they I'm beauty not marks? even lying. Are they nipples or are they beauty marks? And why wouldn't you get They're them nipples. removed and make put does he put tattoos 100% on them? 100% they are nipples. Is he like a and, goat? He, like what is going he, on here? He's not shy about it. He's talked about the fact that he has four nipples. Harry, how is that not brought up on every single interview? Harry, you have four nipples. <laughs> like, I, I, I feel like every conversation or interview he does, like, Harry, let's talk about your four nipples. Wait. <laughs> Oh he, I, wait! I guess he 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 does. He has four nipples. Yeah. Um. I want to say Mark Wahlberg also has extra nipples. That is wild. Yeah, Mark Wahlberg. He's got. I think Mark Wahlberg has a third nipple. That's what it is. He doesn't have a fourth one. He has a third one. So if you look on his left, it has left left nipple, and then you look right below it, you'll see like. It looks like a beauty mark, but it's actually a, a, a third nipple. 
But they're not like if you're people are probably like googling on the phone. Like I gotta see their nipples. They're not. If you look at it, they're not real nipples. I. It's a nipple, bro. It's like a little dot, almost like a beauty mark. It's not like your your. Well, I think there's a difference nipple. between them saying it's a mole and it's a nipple, right? I wonder what the difference is. What's the difference between a nipple and a and a mole? I don't know. Okay, here's one other mole? random one. I don't know. Have you ever Googled Nick Jonas front teeth? He has like three. Yeah, front I did teeth. that. You know, I almost, that one's I, remember, I always find interesting. There was a girl I was talking to one time that kind of like I noticed that after I didn't even realize there was an issue with that. And then this girl I was years ago I was talking to, and I remember noticing her mouth, and I remember Nick Jonas has that, and it was just mm-hmm. it was interesting. I think it's interesting because it's things you would never, ever notice, think about until someone actually, like, points it out. But part of that is what makes him a good singer because his vocal, like the, like, the way his vocal cords work when they come out because of the way his mouth's positioned because he has three front teeth, it's, you know, you helps no him out, actually, musically. <laughs> no, because remember, um, Are you being I think serious? that's what, no, in... Bohemian Rap City, when they talked about Freddie Mercury, yeah. Freddie Mercury talked about that because his mouth was kind of interesting. So big. Yeah. So big. He was able to kind of project in a different way. Hmm. Interesting. Um, um, okay. Last thing that, based on our text, the last thing was something that I didn't know about until this week that I think is so fascinating that I think other people should know about it. But one of the actors of Star Wars, Alec Guinness, um, I didn't realize that this guy made the best decision of his entire life back in 1977 when he was cast to play Obi Nobi <laughs> Obi Wan Kenobi. Um, apparently, he wasn't excited about the role, but what happened was he actually asked for points of the movie and ended up being the greatest. So he got like two percent of royalties for the rest of his life on Star Wars. I want you to think about this. Imagine playing a role and like other people that played a role, let's say like James Earl Jones played obviously he ended up getting paid $7,000 to play Darth Vader's voice in the film. Obviously legendary casting on the end their part. Alex Guinness, oh, I'm sorry, Sir Alex Guinness he asked for the 2% ended up making, they estimate around $95 million on that movie because he asked for 2% of royalties rather than a full paycheck. And not only that, I was reading into it. There were other stars who were offered points, but instead chose, no, I'll just take a bigger paycheck now rather than points on the movie and said that there was the worst mistake they've ever made. So like, um, I forget if, if I can find the person's name, but it was someone else who said, like, I ended up losing like hundreds of millions of dollars by not taking the points in the film. Yeah, I mean, I just wonder back in that time, the, mm-hmm. the, the thought process of doing that, like what made you even to consider doing that. I think because he was already, his life was already, like he had a very successful career. He wasn't interested in doing the movie. So he's like, all right, fine. If I'm going to do this movie, then like make it worth my time. Give me some like percentage of the movie and like, let's move along here. So if it does well, great. But if it doesn't like, okay, you know, he didn't need the paycheck like probably other people needed the paycheck back then. Which, you know, ultimately changed it changed the way movies were made or the movie and the film industry worked for a long time because no, it's his his contract. What I found out his contract has now changed the movie industry as a whole. And that's why today a lot of the big actors want percentage of, you know, uh, of the movie. So because of that deal he did back then, now you got the big actors like Tom Cruise saying, that's great. I'll, I'll take a $20 million paycheck, but to be in your movie, I also want back end, you know, 2% of whatever royalties come in or um, for the rest of time. So it was actually James Earl Jones who, yes, he made that $7,000 for voicing over, but he was offered points. He didn't take it. And then he said he's lost tens of millions of dollars because he rejected the points. Crazy. Crazy how you can't even revisit 
that deal. Yep. But I understand. It's like, listen, that's the contract. So it's not like they could say, hey, years later, hey, let's revisit that deal that we made and restructure it. Whereas, you know, some of these, these deals could be weird. You know, yep. I just think about what happened a few years, you know, when Dave Chappelle, when the Chappelle show went to Netflix, he was like, hey, man, I'm not getting paid on this. And everyone else can't pay, but that was the D. I understood like the other Netflix did a nice thing by helping out Dave, but you know, at the end of time, like that's the deal you made. Like this mm-hmm. is what could that's happen. That's why you and have lawyers and people ne- to negotiate your contracts because this happens all. This happened to me the other day with that Kardashian's billion dollar dynasty. What I happened? signed, I signed a deal thinking that it was going to be just aired in the UK. And I thought this was just like some little project that I probably wouldn't even even seen the end of it. And then a part of that, you know, they had like worldwide rights tucked into it. And then I, I see it on E on E. They're playing it 15 times on E after the Met Gala. I didn't know that was going to be in the US. I didn't realize that they were going to be playing the shit out of it here in the, the States. But that's the deal I signed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So did you go back at him and say, hey, guys, can we re- go over that deal or that's it? No, they, there's there's nothing you can really do. It's done. I so. get it. I get it. But, um, anyway. but guys, uh, that's our sort of random episode uh, that we did know, really uh, this week. Thing. Yeah. Thank you guys for you know what it is, though? watching. When, when we do these random ass episodes, these are the ones that most people hit me up about. Like, I, you know, we, it's so funny how much time and effort we put into booking guests and finding interesting people to talk to. And then it'll be one of these episodes that we're like, oh, let's talk about our text messages. (laughs) People end up loving the most. It's so funny. So it's interesting. It is. But uh, uh, thank you guys for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you guys like and subscribe. It's the best thing to do to really support us. Uh, Keep the comments coming in. Uh, if you're listening on, on Apple, which is always great, please leave a review and we'll actually read your review live on air. It's again, it the best way to explain it to you, it helps out with the algorithm. Um, follow us on Instagram, TikTok. We also have a private Facebook group called Off the Record, which I highly suggest you guys join. It's a really cool community where you guys can ask us stuff, where you guys can ask us stuff, you guys can ask each other stuff. It's awesome. Follow me at, at I'm Glenn. Follow Dax Holt at Dax Holtz. We'll see you guys next week. Later. What's up, guys? If you liked that video, there's plenty more that came from. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell so we can just feed you all the goodness daily. Hurry up. Come on. Let's go.